the five stocks in this video surged an average 2,000% in the five years to last year's peak, more than 20 times your money in just five years. And while each of these growth stocks has come down hard in the crash, all five are still growth companies, changing the world in which we live and with the potential to see those stock prices touch those highs once again. In this video, I'll share the five growth stocks to watch and the one every investor should be buying. This is the sixth in our Just One Stock series. If you could only invest in one stock in different themes, which would it be? We're going to cover all the strategies here, from value to growth, tech stocks, and by the end of this series, you'll have a portfolio of the very best stocks to buy. So join the community and watch each week for that next episode. I showed you last week how it would take 51 years investing in a stable dividend stock like Coca-Cola to put that Lamborghini in the driveway. Now that is a respectable 11.6% annual return, but the tech stocks we looked at last week in the NASDAQ have blown that away with a 16% annual return over the last 20 years. Well, growth stocks are like the supercharged part of the NASDAQ, stocks with the potential to beat even that 16% annual return. In fact, the five growth stocks I'll highlight today can produce 20% annual returns to fair value, and right now is the perfect time to be watching these stocks. All are down double digits from their peak, but still the same growth companies that pushed prices up 10 and 20 times over the past five years. Now let's start with a few of the growth stocks I'm watching, fast growing companies that just nearly made that top pick. Then I'm gonna show you what I'm looking for in these and reveal the number one best growth stock to buy right now. First on our growth stock list, Digital Turbine, ticker APPS, which was up more than 60 fold from the 2017 IPO to last year. And now for all these stocks, I'm not suggesting they're gonna get back to those all time highs anytime soon, but what we'll see is that those growth factors that took them there, that really got investors looking at these stocks, they are still very much there. These companies are dominating in growth industries and will turn that growth into profits in the future. Digital Turbine is kind of a behind the scenes picks and shovels play on the influencer era, providing media and mobile applications for content and advertising. And maybe I'm biased working in the industry here, but the company has some great fundamentals. Now, the big news recently was a strategic partnership with Google to build for Android devices and expand into their mobile, connected devices and TV for the Android ecosystem. And the company is also focusing on its global expansion through a partnership with Telefonica, one of the largest telecom providers in Latin America. And we see that explosive growth here. Sales are up 125% in the last year and up an 88% pace in the last three. At the same time, the company has been able to significantly improve its profitability over those years. Revenue is expected to continue higher at a 33% pace in the next three years and, and just to continue from there. Even if growth moderates to 25% though over the next five years, that takes revenue to $2.3 billion by the company's fiscal 2028. Their shares trade for just 3.3 times on a price to sales basis, which is incredibly cheap for a growth stock like this. In fact, the stock traded as high as 13 times price to sales last year, but even if the valuation goes to just four times sales in the next bull market, this stock could hit $93 a share for a 287% return over those five years. We are just getting started, but we need to talk about the elephant in the room before it stampedes the comments section, before, before I get 100 plus comments about how these stocks suck because the price is just down over the last year. Well, no shit. The entire stock market is down, especially growth stocks like these, but you do not analyze a stock based on its price chart. Nation, a stock's value is based on the company's future earnings. For example, if your sole criteria for a good stock is if the price has gone up recently, would this be a good investment? Hell no. Even though shares have bounced off the bottom, Intel had lost its competitive growth by 2002 and has done nothing over the last 20 years. Here it is, underperforming the NASDAQ by more than 460% since. Or what about this stock? It crashed in the 2008 bubble along with the rest of the market, but then shot higher on that rebound. Was this a good stock just because that share price was going up again? Again, no, that's shares of BlackBerry Limited, another company that had lost its innovative advantage and the stock lost 93% over the last decade. And my point is folks, you cannot just look at a stock's price chart and let that do your investing. I'm gonna show you exactly what to look for in these growth stocks later in the video, but please, please do not fall for some of the bullshit you hear on some of these other YouTube channels, just, just pushing you into crap stocks that, that happen to be going up at one point. I do wanna get your input on this though. What do you look for in the growth stock? And do you think any of these runner up stocks here should have been the top pick? So watch through and then scroll down and let me know in the comments. Our next growth stock, Invite Corporation, ticker NVTA, recently reported earnings that sent the stock up 286% in a single day. And while it's given back some of those gains, 
the future is proven for this company. Invite is leading in that genetic testing and screening area of the market, focusing initially on the oncology segment, but really expanding through its genetic information testing to, to answer all kinds of questions about health in, in all age groups from pediatrics to fertility and diagnostics. Innovation has pushed the cost of multi-cancer and other gene screening down 95% from 2015 to, to just $1,500 today, and it's expected to fall another 80% to just $250 by 2025. But even that current $1,500 screening cost, the purple line here is still only reimbursable for those 60 and older. As you get those costs lower though, you get the test down to where people much younger are being reimbursed and, and they're willing to pay for it. At a $1,000 test, we could open multi-screening cancer to those as young as 40 years old. Now, being able to test people at a younger age could potentially save more than 60,000 people a year in the US alone and it means a massive increase in the market for screening and testing stocks. And it looks like that trend is starting to show through the Invitae results. The company blew past its earnings expectations last quarter, not only growing revenue by nearly 18%, but, but also improving on profitability. During the quarter, the National Comprehensive Cancer Network updated its guidelines for colorectal cancer, removing some age group and cancer type restrictions that could open up that increase in testing. The company is estimating a $154 billion market opportunity across four segments and, and is already one of the most advanced in genomic stocks for revenue. Revenue is expected to double over the next three years to over $1 billion annually. And this is as the company improves profitability as well and converts more of that into earnings. This is another one that has just seen the valuation just destroyed over the last year. Shares trade for a price of just two times sales against last year's valuation of 25 times on that price to sales basis. Now, obviously 25 times multiple was ridiculous, but even if we get back to a three times multiple closer to the average for those diagnostics companies and on that $1 billion sales target, we get a price target of at least $13.15 per share or a 200% return in just three years. I'll reveal those next three growth stocks to watch, as well as what I'm looking for in these fast growing companies, but keeping ahead of these means keeping ahead of the news. For that, I wanna personally invite you to get the weekly bow tie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news and trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community. So look for that sign up link below. Next is one of the largest stock positions in my own portfolio with 1300 shares or about $48,000 in Teladoc Health, ticker TDOC. Teladoc is the global leader in virtual healthcare with a provider network that covers 76 million US patients and a billion member data points from traditional telehealth to remote monitoring and the next generation in primary care. Now, obviously the last two years were just huge here, like five years of growth all in one, but the company was already growing at a solid rate. A membership was growing at 33% annually since 2018, and the company booked nearly 15 million patient visits last year. Revenue doubled in 2021, and 80% of that is from recurring services. So I like this for that stability, even if that growth in telehealth slows from last year's pace. Longer term, telehealth and virtual care is the future, but I think the data is really that undiscovered value here, processing all those patient data points for that analysis and research. Now the news lately has been about Amazon's $3.5 billion acquisition of One Medical, expanding its own healthcare services region and really worrying investors about the competition for Teladoc. So I wanted to address that here. First of all, Amazon has been building out its healthcare division since buying online pharmacy pill pack in 2018 and, and testing services on its own staff since 2019. It's already failed at one joint healthcare company with Berkshire Hathaway and JP Morgan, and it obviously hasn't changed the game for providers. With the one medical acquisition, Amazon is getting a small, unprofitable company with just 767,000 customers versus Teladoc's 76 million customers. So, so Teladoc is 100 times larger here and still dominating the industry. And you know, this is all if the deal gets regulatory approval because we all know how Congress is all over Amazon for monopoly and its e-commerce and digital ads already. And here where the last year's shares of Teladoc were the poster child for those expensive growth stocks, the sell-off has taken this one into really attractive territory. Through increased monetization and modest member growth each year, Management has a three-year target for 25 to 30% annual revenue growth, and that takes it to just over $4 billion in revenue by 2024 on estimates for just $2.6 billion this year. Their shares now trade for 2.8 times on that price to sales basis, down from 17 times last year on a stock still growing by a strong double digits. Even on a very conservative price multiple of four, five times for its 2024 sales target of $4 billion, 
That is a $20 billion company for a 238% return to $122 per share. PayPal Holdings, ticker PYPL, is another of the largest holdings in my portfolio with 500 shares, though a little slower growth than the others on this list. Now, I'm fine with that though because the company is still growing active users at a 20% plus rate a year end and on revenue of over $25 billion, that is not an easy task. Whereas most of these growth stocks are smaller startup type investments, PayPal dominates the more mature digital payments market and is leading in digital wallets. Now, a digital wallet is just really another way of saying a totally online bank account, and the growth here could surprise everyone. It took Square and PayPal just seven and 10 years to reach 60 million users. That's less than a third the time it took JP Morgan when it started back in the 1990s. And those digital wallet users could more than double in the next few years, reaching 230 million by 2025 just in the United States. More than just that growth for fintech stocks though is the potential change in valuation. On a per user basis, the Venmo and Cash App right now are valued at between $250 to $700 for owners Square and PayPal. But that's just a fraction of the nearly $20,000 each customer could be worth. In fact, right now, I'm estimating PayPal's Venmo unit is worth just about $10 billion, just, just a fraction of the $115 billion market cap for the company. But, but if the company were able to optimize these users to that full $20,000 potential, Venmo alone could be worth more than a trillion dollars. That's 10 times the stock value for all of PayPal, and it could happen in the next five years. That $20,000 estimate comes from the ability to cross-sell users into everything financial for these fintech companies to become a one-stop for banking, investing, lending, and credit. And you see the breakdown in this chart. That finance side of the business would be just over 10 grand a customer, but the next level is expanding into e-commerce, doubles that valuation. And obviously the market is just not giving PayPal the credit for that potential in digital wallets at a price to sales valuation of just four and a half times revenue. Now sales are expected to grow at a relatively slower 13% pace, but, but I think that underestimates the potential here in PayPal when it starts monetizing that user base. I have a $175 price target on the shares if nothing changes here, if it just keeps on going with that rate. But, but when it does unlock that digital wallet valuation, PayPal could go much higher. I'll reveal that best growth stock to buy, but you know, I can't just drop a list of stocks in your lap and say, go buy these. So I wanna show you what I'm looking for in these growth stocks, because it's gonna be different from what we wanna see in other stocks like dividend payers or, or even some of those tech stocks. Most important here is to find that one metric in the stocks industry that signals super normal growth. Now for many of these, it's gonna be that subscriber growth number. So especially in these new innovative industries like virtual healthcare, streaming, and financial technology, investors wanna see how fast a company can grab that market share, bring in as many customers as possible before the industry matures, because because at that point, that market share is gonna solidify and, and that growth turns to massive earnings on a dominant position. For other industries, especially biotech and other tech stocks, it's all about that innovative edge maintained through spending on research and development. This is something we talked about in our last video on tech stocks, how important it is that a company develops and keeps that innovation edge over its competitors through the R&D spending. Because Nation, this is how Intel died, by cutting back on the amount it spent each year to maintain that innovative advantage for its designs. And it's easy enough to find this by looking at the company's income statement here on Yahoo Finance under the financials tab. Here we see Datadog, ticker DDOG, spent $491 million on research and development in the last 12 months. You, know, you take that number, divide by the total revenue here, and it's spending more than 41% of its revenue to maintain that competitive advantage and growth. Now, of course, I'm also looking for that revenue growth and the operating margin as indications of a deeper competitive advantage, but we highlighted those in the last video as well. So look for that links for the best tech stocks to buy in the description below. And the best growth stock right now, one that I started investing in just this year, SoFi Technologies, ticker SOFI. SoFi started as an online student loan refinance platform, but has evolved into a full service fintech wallet and I believe is one of the best position for that future of digital banking. Where other fintech platforms like even PayPal and Upstart are still trying to bring on those products and services, SoFi already has a lead in everything finance from insurance to credit, investing, and banking. And a big part of this was the company's approval for a banking charter through its acquisition of Golden Pacific Bank Corps that closed last year. Because most of these other fintech companies don't have that bank charter, 
They can't offer services like checking or savings and don't have access to those low rates like a traditional bank. This really does put SoFi way ahead of the competition and the company is gonna be leveraging that for growth. And we saw that strength in the company's most recent quarter with revenue up 57% from last year and net interest income up 101% as, as SoFi really flexes its banking muscles. And remember, that growth is even as that extended forbearance on student loan payments created a drag. So once that gets lifted, probably next year, we could see even faster growth. The company has been reporting around 80% growth in new members over the quarters to almost 3.5 million. And while the percentage increase is slowing, that is still amazing growth at that scale. To put that into perspective, the company's closest competitor, Ally Financial, grew its customer base by just 11.7% last year. And now besides that price to sales valuation that we'll look at next, I think the market value to client accounts valuation is even more interesting. SoFi's market cap, so the total value of all the shares of five and a half billion is about $1,500 per customer account. But if we look at some of the traditional banks growing far less quickly, like Bank of America and Wells Fargo, we see an average of $2,500 per customer account on those stock valuations. That would mean SoFi is trading at a 40% discount to these other bank stocks. Our expectations are for 35% growth to $3.7 billion over the next three years. And all this is happening as management expects to improve profitability from a 3% EBITDA margin to 11% this year. Our shares are priced right now at 5.6 times revenue and we'll stick with that right around five and a half times multiple, but on expected sales, it could be a $20.3 billion company in just three years for a 269% return to $25 per share. But that growth won't stop there, and it's why I'm calling SoFi the best growth stock to buy right now. Click on the video to the right and get caught up with our Just One Stock series, the very best stocks in each theme for your portfolio. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.